Hello, I'm Darren from Zone Scene. I'm here today with noted local historian Douglas Denno and we're going to take a leisurely walk up to Harvey's Cross tell you all about the significance of this wonderful little monument. So Douglas, what is Harvey's Cross? Well, Harvey's wasn't always a cross, um, Darren. It actually started off as a stone, rather like a milestone. It was placed there in 1819 when a horseman who was staying in Rottingdean, Colonel John Harvey, was staying in the village at the home of uh, Mrs. Daltrey uh, on the Green in Rottingdean, rather a large house there. And he was out on his horse. Some people thought he might be hunting, but others have said that he wouldn't be hunting in June. But the, the fact of the matter is that he fell from his horse, may have had a heart attack, uh, the horse may have gone down the hole or something like that, and um, he died on that spot. Um, and of course the family wanted to uh, mark, uh, make a, a small memorial to that, and he wasn't from this area, he was from Bedford, uh, quite a wealthy family, and they decided to place a stone there, which is engraved um, JH 1819. And the cross only came later, uh, in the 19th century, when the family decided to put that there as a, a better and more full mm. reminder of his yeah. um, accident. So Douglas, how did you discover Harvey's Cross? Well, it was a strange story. I had heard about the memorial vaguely from people, but um, my neighbour, uh, Peter Dutton, who lived in the same road as me in Saltpeen, um, suggested that we go up to visit the site and uh, see what we could find. and we searched and searched and quite frankly it was so overgrown that uh, we did have a bit of a job to locate it and in fact I, I did see a, a slab among brambles and thistles and everything and I thought it was to do with the with a cesspit or drainage or farm some sort of farm structure but it, it was actually the base of uh, the Harvey's Cross on, on which the cross had stood. So were the Harvey family anything to do with the brewers in Lewis? Uh, not at all, no. People usually ask that question, it seems the most obvious one. I mean the Harvey family is very well known for Bristol cream, Harvey's of Bristol. Mm. Uh, there may be some sort of distant link, but certainly this branch of the family is not to do with them at all. But very interestingly, uh, Harvey's Brewery did uh, support this project and um, they very kindly produced a beer right. uh, showing Colonel Harvey on the label. Have you got any? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got one at bottle at home. But it's probably, at home's no good. It'll probably explode. <laughs> I should think with the passage of time. <laughs> so that was a, lo a wonderful gesture on their part. So, Douglas, when was the cross damaged? Uh, well, it's been damaged on three occasions since it was restored. It was restored in 1999. 180 years after uh, the accident where John Harvey died. Um, so it was quite a grand occasion and we had uh, uh, you know, folk singers and um, a beer uh, created for the occasion and uh, about 80 people turned up here. Mm. So it was, it was a big event, even the Lord, Lord Lieutenant of East Sussex right. uh, uh, graced it with his presence. Okay Douglas, so you said that it um, needed restoration um, in 1999. Uh, what damage had happened to it uh, prior to that? Uh, well, in fact, um, it had uh, been destroyed by the army uh, for target practice in the 1940s, right. sadly, uh, together with a lovely little cottage, Harvey's Cottage, which was part of Harvey's farm. Okay. Uh, but that's another story which we can obviously yeah. go into. Uh, but yes, so sadly, I mean, it stood uh, until the war years, it stood here quite happily as a bit of a local landmark. Uh, undisturbed and I think looked after as well, you know, the site around it. Uh, from about, well, between the years of 1870 and 1890, that's when the family decided to add uh, to the memorial. Instead of just right. having the little milestone in the front, they thought, let's do a, a, a proper yeah. uh, memorial to John Harvey and have a cross. Yeah. And that's when it um, was created. We're uh, just south of the cross in a little area that has a farm building here. Um, this area looks like it may have had some usage. Um, can you tell us more about that? Yes, um, in fact, of course, that barn was, uh, was in use, I believe, into the 50s. And uh, over there, by those, uh, more or less where those two, those twin silos are, was um, a little cottage called Harvey's Cottage, uh, flint built. 
uh, and it was the, the centre, if you like, of Harvey's farm. And who lived at the farm? Uh, well, in that, um, f uh, in that dwelling was uh, the Pettit family. Okay. Um, there are relatives of the, of the family uh, in other parts of Sussex, like Rodmel. Uh, and it was quite a large family, and on the Sunday afternoons, many of the family members came over, even by car, uh, right. to enjoy <laughs> a lovely Sunday lunch, sit out, yeah. enjoy the peace and quiet and uh, catch up on family news yeah. and Steady himself was a bit of a character I got his name by coming down the uh, Steady, distant, yes, Steady Petty. Steady, yes, he'd say after a night in the in the pub at uh, Rottendean he'd come down the, <laughs> the hill at the rate of knots and shout out to his horse, whoa, Steady! <laughs> and that's how the name stuck. Right. Okay, we're uh, inside the echoey barn um, Quite spooky. I would have made. I wouldn't want to come up here in the middle of the night. No, exactly. uh, are there any stories or legends um, to do with the cross and the uh, sad demise of John Harvey? Uh, well, yes, there were um, stories circulating. I mean, uh, uh, on a couple of occasions, people wrote to the Sussex County Magazine, especially in the early fifties, um, and they would uh, mention the, the story of, uh, of the accident and Harvey himself. And uh, one person was uh, quite terrified by hearing the sound of galloping hooves uh, in the area. Um, another story was that there was a headless rider. <laughs> in fact, I uh, was approached by the Brighton and Hove leader, and they headlined the article, uh, the story of the headless rider. Oh, right, okay. And uh, also Bob Copper, the, uh, the noted uh, local historian and folk singer, wrote in his book on Rottingdean, growing up in Rottingdean, early to rise. Uh, precisely about those uh, myths and, and legends right. which have grown up and yeah. uh, he, he described himself about turning around hearing rustling on the gravel and he was terrified oh, at right. that point you know so yes there, there are the stories out there so we better hop it then <laughs> 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 well that was a lovely walk indeed up to uh, learn about harvey's great. cross and yes. its history um thank you very much douglas oh, for pleasure. taking me up there and thank you ryan uh, for doing the filming and uh, we did go up armed with some well, utensils uh, to right, have a look yes. at maybe the clearance but uh, it's quite a lot up there and um, I think we would need a, a we need volunteers yeah we yes. would need a few people up there to, to make that Band happen of people you know, yeah as we have had in the past so uh, I can rustle up some people but yeah. any, any uh, volunteers wanted to put their name forward they'd be welcome yeah well maybe yeah, we so can make it you know we'll a see. regular Thing, an, annual event, right? an annual event. An annual event. That might be something in future. Excellent. Good. Okay. Thank you. Lovely day. And, and yes. uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.